Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 293 for Monday, February 22nd, 2021. And welcome to Gig Gab. Welcome back to Gig Gab. Welcome to the Gig Gab family, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. Yeah, man. Hey, um, I've been messing around with Jam Kazam a little bit. The uh, the streaming um, thing, whatever that... That defies physics? Yeah, no, no, no. No, the <laughs> physics is definitely a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> As it turns out, I am wont to say physics is a thing. And, and Jam Kazam highlights that quite well. Uh, but I've, I've had minor amounts of success with it. Uh, it it's, you know, they, so for those of you that, that don't know, I know we've talked about it on the show a little bit, but it's, it's an online platform for real-time interaction between musicians. So the idea is you can play music with other people over the internet. And this is, there's a bit of a holy grail at, at play here, right? Because... Physics is a thing and it gets in the way of this, right? There's latency. Even when you and I are doing the show, like we've picked a platform, we use discord, uh, but we picked a platform with really low latency, meaning the time it takes for what I say to get to you. And then what you say to get back to me, that that's what we'll call latency here. The, the lag, uh, and we've got it pretty low, but there are times when I notice that, you know, the latency between us causes us to talk over each other. There's other times when we talk over each other just because that's what we're doing. Because I'm rude. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, one of us might be, but I think it's probably been both of us at times. So, um, so you, you know, the, the and that really matters when you're playing music with people. They say that uh, one millisecond of latency equates to one foot of distance. So it takes sound, essentially, this math isn't exactly right, but it's close enough takes sound one millisecond to travel one foot. So if you've got, you and I right now probably have 30 to maybe 40 milliseconds between us. So that's like we're 30 to 40 feet apart and there's that kind of lag. That's no big deal for a conversation like this. That's kind of a deal when you're playing music with each other. Uh, you know, I certainly remember, time. what's that? Trying to stay in time. Trying to stay in time. Yeah, I remember my first gig playing on a big stage and we all, you know, I was whatever, 18 or something. And we all spread out like, Oh, let's use the whole stage. And then three songs in, it was like, this is a freaking disaster because we weren't used to it. Right. You know, the guitar player was playing behind cause he was hearing me late and I was hearing him out of my monitor. And that would, you know, it was like, this is why in ears help. Like, you know, the, all of these things sort of come together to solve for this problem. Uh, and it's why a lot of bands, and we were certainly that way when I was younger, we, if we were offered a big stage, it was like, yeah, we'll take it. And we're going to take the middle third. Like, we're good to go. We like being on top of each other. Uh, but you don't get to be on top of each other right now because of COVID and all that. So these online latency, low latency platforms have come together. And Jam Kazam certainly seems to have gotten a lot of it right, both on the technical side and also on the community side. So you can just join. I joined about, uh, I, I logged in. I, I've had an account for a little while, but I logged in about an hour ago and wound up playing uh, a song by the Tams from, uh, with a keyboard player in North Carolina and a singer in Georgia. And we had latencies of, I think to, to the keyboard player, I was about 45 seconds, 45 milliseconds, Paul. And to the singer, it was like 35 and Jam Kazan has the tools that tells you what the latency is. Or are you using something else? No, absolutely. Jam Kazam tells you. Yeah, and it's really important to know. There was a guy that a guitar player that sort of popped in on this session. It was just an open session and he was at like 150 to all of us. And we were like, dude, it's not going to work. Um, mm. So, um, so, but it also tells you what your internal latency of your setup is because every little bit counts, right? You want to have as, as little in your, set up as possible so that when you get to the edge of your network, AKA the beginning of the internet, that you're not already at like 10 or 12 milliseconds. Cause the internet's going to go and add at least 20, if not 30 or 40 or a hundred to whatever you've got going on. And so it really, it kind of walks you through. And I've been through a lot of this both, I mean, over the years for the podcast, but now with jam Kazam and the advice that I can give to anyone who wants to do this 
is start as simple as possible. I started super complex, like mixing, submixing all my drums and all this stuff. And I was having issues with people, but my problem was I didn't know where my issues were. Jam Kazam will tell you what your internal latency is, but it's possible that it's not getting it all right. Like if you've got other things that it's not seeing, then there might be extra stuff. I was pretty confident that there, I'm still pretty confident that there wasn't, but I thought today I'm going to go super simple. And so I just fed it uh, the two overheads over my drums without going through anything. Like right now for the podcast, I use Logic as our mixer. So I've actually got a DAW running and it's really just running as a mixer. I didn't do any of that. It was the two overheads. My vocal mic I used for, I, I synced in for vocals and, and just talking with people. And then it was going straight back out to my audio device for uh, headphones. So no mixer or anything. It was just my Thunderbolt, Personas, Quantum 2626. And Jam Kazam told me, okay, you've got three milliseconds of latency. And it's like, okay, awesome. Like, that's a great place to start. And 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 these jams were okay, Paul. The, the problem was that the keyboard player, you know, he and I were 45 milliseconds apart. And I just had to plow forward with, it was like he, he wasn't bad at keeping time, by the way, but it was like he was, and he was always behind me. And so I just had to plow ahead. And the thing is people, and this is where I'm going to chastise everybody out there except the drummers. So you drummers, you can, you can feel proud here (laughs) that the community of jam Kazam is the mentality of it is such that the drummer has to play ahead. Everybody else just locks in with the drummer. It's like, screw you all. I want to lock in. So why didn't the keyboard player play ahead and I'll lock in with him and it's just ignore me. I'll play with you. And, and that's not the mentality of, of the jam Kazam community, but, but it's, it's an interesting thing. People are always like, Oh, drummers have it really hard. And it's like, well, only because you make them. Uh, But jam Kazam's got, I haven't tested this yet, but it's got some, um, uh, yeah, I think it's got a metronome that everyone can hear. And that to well, me would be the best way of going about this and just yeah, walk in with the metronome. Like the solution to it, right? Yeah. Is yeah, is everybody gets a metronome and then Jan Kazam would buffer everything coming through it and sync it back up. Well, it's that, all in real you're playing in real time with yourself. So there's no sync back up. I mean, for mm-hmm. recording, sure. Yes, absolutely. And I think it does that, right? But in terms of like you're hearing, I'm I know when I'm hitting a snare drum. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So and you know when you're strumming your guitar. So yeah, it it like it's it's gonna have a little bit of it really it feels like a big stage sort of cavernous sort of thing is what it is. And you just gotta know what you're doing and just play. And it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. I I'm eager to try it with some of my uh, local bandmates and and musician friends because latency is introduced by a lot of different things. Then one of them is how many, you know, how many switches there are, uh, how many routing stations on the yeah. internet there are between you and me. Right. And to, to do it with another person in my neighborhood, theoretically, there should be very few extra switches in the way. And so we might be able to get to, you know, 25 milliseconds with each other. And now we're starting to talk about things that are imperceptible right. to the human ear. Right. But that one guy who who's on, a satellite internet connection mm. is probably going to pay the price for this. No, and in fact, a, another piece of advice for this: no Wi-Fi. You must be plugged in via Ethernet. Wired, yeah, because yeah, Wi-Fi is going to add somewhere between two and eight milliseconds, which is not great. But yeah. the other thing that Wi-Fi does is it's inconsistent because it's constantly, you know, renegotiating the connection, and so you'll you'll right. get two now and twelve in five seconds, and then back down to four, and like that's no good. That that kind of jitter is bad. But it is doable. Like they're like I had an enjoyable time playing this song with these guys. It wasn't the same kind of enjoyable time that I would have playing with people that are in the same room, right? But it was like okay, I can see how you set your expectations, you you know, obsess about your network. I mean, it's super helpful to be a like network nerd going into this and an audio nerd, right? Like I happen to have all the right you know, nerd knowledge to, to give myself a leg up here. And even then it's like, eh, okay. You know, and, and Dan so Meppen, it recognizes whatever your audio interface is. So if I'm going to use my universal audio interface, 
Um, it'll just show up because Apple does all the work of, you know, telling, telling my computer, this is where the audio is coming from. And Jenkins and will just let you choose that as opposed to the internal microphone, that type of thing. That's correct. And, and you, you sort of stumbled onto a good point. The, the max built in audio framework is called core audio and it is, it is built to be low latency. It is, you know, all of the things that it needs to be, you don't have to do anything special if you're using a Mac, if you're using a Windows machine, the built-in audio framework is not the nearly low latency enough. It will add hundreds of milliseconds of latency. Wow. So you need to use something called ASIO, which is, I think it's Steinberg created it, but it's ASIO. Uh, you need to get ASIO drivers for your uh, audio interface. And those are are fairly common uh, for most interfaces, because if you want to hear anything, even just doing your own recording, if you want to hear anything in sync, that's the only way to do it. What uh, about iOS? If you want to do it on a pad or a phone, I don't think there's any jam Kazam for iPhone yet. Uh, Isn't it just a web app though? Oh no, no, no. Jam Kazam is an app you're running on your computer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, you could do most of this through a web app, you know, I mean like HTML and that, Technology has come a long way, but I don't think you'd get the latency low enough. I, I think it needs it. to be like a compiled. Everything thing. got to be as native and close as, to the process. As, as close possible. to the metal as possible. Yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. But it, you know, it's, it's interesting and I encourage you to try it, folks. I mean, it's, you know, if you've got an audio interface, like I said, keep it as simple as you can the first time. Don't worry. Even when you want to add effects like reverb and things like that to your voice, I would recommend letting Jam Kazam add them. You can insert oh. effects in the software because whatever it does, it's going to know to account for. Whereas, what does it output to? Um, can I send the stream to a Facebook live stream, for example? You could. Yeah, there, there are. I saw that there were some streaming options available in there and it does have the option of doing video. Most people, and at least the open jams don't. But I've seen a couple of folks like in the Jam Kazam Facebook groups posting, you know, videos that they've recorded and, and things like that. So you you could do it. But I, I again, I would start super simple, just like, you know, plug your in. If you've got a two channel interface, that's perfect because you're not going to be tempted to do anything else. Right. Sure. You know, plug plug a microphone into one for your vocal and talking to people and, uh, you know, your instrument or whatever it is into another and just go that way, you know, and the two overheads on my drums were fine. People, people were like, Oh, your drums sound great. Like, great. Perfect. You know what? We're not looking to make the next hit record here. We're just looking to jam with each other. It's like, yeah, yeah just like get rid of all of the, like, okay. Like what's the most bare bones? Like, like you're saying straight to the metal and it, it can work. Like, and I'm, like I said, I'm eager to try it with Russ and Mike um, because they, you know, they live, I mean, Russ could walk to my house and, uh, and has at times, I think. And Mike is, you know, maybe a five minute drive. So it, you know, we're close to each other and I'm eager to see how that does, but, um, yeah, it's something, you know, something to do while we sort of bide our time here. But, but I feel like there might be like, if this tech, if we can, if, and Jam Kazam is working on a lot of this, they, they do some of it routed through what Jam Kazam calls their, their mesh network. It's not the same as like a mesh Wi-Fi network, but it's, you know, a, a, like a BitTorrent style peer to peer thing. And I might have that wrong, but, um, but essentially the same thing where it's routing the most efficient way it can through whatever devices are online at the time. Or yeah. you can go directly peer to peer, which would mean, you know, like I go to you, you go to me and there's no middleman. Yeah. Um, and they're they're working on making that as efficient as possible for obvious reasons. Um, but you know the internet is the internet, so it's like mm -hmm. once you leave the house, you know that's it's I'll not really off. up to you. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, you just get to find out what it's like. But yeah, it right. it's interesting. Um, you know, and I look forward to even a few years from now. You know, hopefully we're all back to playing gigs and and have some semblance of whatever you know that looks like. But this tech is helpful. Like if you and I ever wanted to, you know, jam on something or like, you know, when I came out to play with you or whatever, I, you know, it'd be great to like sync up with you, me and like you, me and Nick got together for a rehearsal when I got to town, right. Your keyboard yeah. player, it would have been it great been to be able to do that online and not have yeah. to worry about the time. You know what I mean? So like those kinds of things, I, you know, there's an op, there's an opportunity here. I don't know. I don't know when we get there, but it's, so, it's nice to see this moving forward. Yeah. So, no, I'll yeah. check it out. I, yeah, yeah. I know Simon and I have been dying to do something together. So there you we go. Can figure this out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think that's just two guys, two microphones and two acoustic guitars. We should be able to get it done. That's it. Yeah. And, and guitar, I've, I've listened in on some people, you know, I can, you can drop in on a session and, and as long as you stay quiet, then you're quiet. Right. And they don't have to, you know, that you aren't interrupting. And I've dropped in on some people that are doing exactly that. Like the, you know, acoustic, two acoustic guitars or whatever. And that tends to work out really well when you've got somebody that's playing anything percussive. That's when, you know, you really got to have your stuff together, but, but yeah. you've got, you've got a lot more wiggle room when it's, when it's, you know, just a couple of guitars or whatever you can sort yeah. of play and fall into it. So I that should grab cool. my guitar and, and set it up and, and see how that, like, see how that goes versus playing the drums. Cause that mm-hmm. might be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, I want to take a minute and talk. Are we good on this one? Are we uh, very good? Yeah, okay. that's really cool. informative. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, man, absolutely. I want to take a minute and talk about our sponsor for this week, which is Banzoogle. Banzoogle is your band's home or your solo project's home on the internet. It is an engine, a system, a, a whole platform built by musicians for musicians that makes it super easy to build a beautiful website, a great electronic press kit. Whatever you need for your music, Banzoogle is your home for that. They have all the features you'd need. Hosting, if you like, you know, I mean, that. well, hosting, I guess, is part of it. A custom domain name, if you like, or you can just be hosted at Banzoogle.com. That's fine. They've got all these templates that you start with for your design. So you don't have to start with just a blank page and figure out, how do I code HTML? You don't have to know any of that. You look through their template library, you pick the template that most resonates with you, and then you customize it. You change out the artwork, you change out what goes where, and then you build your own little home there. And then to that, you can add everything you need. They've got tools to sell your music, to sell your merch. All of that's commission-free. They have commission-free crowdfunding and fan subscription features. They've even got mailing list tools. We know how important the mailing list is. Posting just to Facebook isn't enough. We need to email these people. Banzoogle's got you covered. All the social media integrations, of course, and live support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. And because you're a GigGab podcast listener, you can go to banzoogle.com. You try it free for 30 days. And then use promo code GIGGAB, all one word, G-I-G-G-A-B, to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. That's Banzoogle.com, promo code GIGGAB. And our thanks to Banzoogle for, well, for sponsoring this episode, but also just for doing what they do. So thanks, Banzoogle. Absolutely. They're great. And, you know, thinking about uh, musicians and promotion and having your presence on the Internet, I just want to share a really quick um, tip that I got from listening to our friends over at Cover Band Confidential. They did a whole show on merchandise Mm. and they were talking about they just offered it to and I'm just going to give you two links to put into the show notes. Sure. One is called Threadless.com and their competitor is called Redbubble.com. Yep. And this is... They're the emerging um, on-demand merch. Um, you upload your logo. You pick what you want it on. You don't have to take inventory of you know sizes, which is always the nightmare figuring yeah. out the sizes. So you don't have to do this. Basically, you can have an online store. Um, really easy, you know. They have, and it will connect to your band Zoogle, which is kind of cool. <laughs> uh, and there so, yeah. So, you know, just in terms of people thinking about merch, if you want to get out of the headache of merch business. Wondering who's going to set up your stand, who's going to man your stand, who's going to take in the money, processing the money. If you want to simplify things and sell things year round, um, check out threadless.com and redbubble.com. Two interesting right. new solutions. And it goes along with uh, having a great website, which absolutely Banzoogle is. Again, every time we talk about them as a sponsor, I feel compelled to say I'm a customer of Banzoogle. Right. Um, before, they, before they got involved with us, love them, love their support. Again, it's just nice to be able to talk about musician promotion problems with, with musicians. Yeah. They get it right. Like that's the key. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. I hear you, man. I hear you. It's good stuff. Hey man. I, um, I had a good weekend this weekend. I, I played a gig and, uh, on Friday night and I streamed a gig on Saturday night. Both were a lot of fun. The first reflection on that was just to get into that flow of, of having some regularities in preparing, mm. you know, getting a little bang, for the buck, for the amount of preparation I did, getting to use it twice instead of once was kind of nice. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I know we were saying that we because we did two more next to normal shows this weekend, and it was we were like, this is great. It's not some five show weekend that's a, oppressive. It's we get, but we do get to play it twice. Like this is really yeah. kind of nice. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So um, that was kind of cool. But I wanted to share with you a little bit about um, 
my experiences about the scene that I'm learning about down here. Now, again, mm. things are largely closed up. Sure. Slowly opening. Like the place I played, you know, they were, they were ahead of the game and, and pushed themselves. So a couple of, a couple of wineries are starting to, to pop out and say, we have enough space to do socially distant things. So it's slowly starting to be gigs are available. Um, I have spent this time just trying to get to know people down here. And so, you know, you go right for the guys who are the most successful and just say, Hey, what's, what's it like down here? You know, any, anything you can share. There was this one musician who uh, I was aware of. I'd actually heard him play before. His name is Dan Curcio. And he has a, a really cool group down here called Moonshiners Collective. Okay. And Dan put a post out that said, Hey, you know, local musicians, we're all going to come out of this. If there's anything I can do to help anybody, you know, I just feel we're all in this together. And I'm like, this is a guy I want to know. So I called him and we had a really nice chat. He was incredibly generous with his knowledge and direction. And he actually pointed me to a couple of venues and I got a gig at the end of March at one of the venues that he That's picked. Okay. Played. That was the guy. All right. Yeah. You told us about yeah. that. That's great. So I was, you know, really, you know, a lot of gratitude to Dan for being so generous with his, with his, uh, his input. And I encourage people to check him out. The guy's got a good, beautiful voice, just a really unique sound. His band is different. They have, I think six or seven original. How, how do you spell albums. his last name? C U C U R C I O. All right. Well, uh, so Dan's a cool guy, but I, I, and another conversation I had with a guy down here, we were talking about the scene and, you know, I don't know when I'm going to meet enough guys that I can be picky about if I wanted to have a band down here. Now, now I've got, you know, stuff going on on a regular basis up in the Bay area that I'm going to continue doing. The house rockers are going to keep going and that's kind of cool. And I've got this kind of solo thing down here. That's now starting, you know, I know I've got two or three venues that I've gotten some work with and I think I'll get more and it's, that's only going to grow as things open up. But what if I wanted to play in a band down here? What if I wanted to have a band to back me on some things down here? And so, you know, you have this range of uh, options, you know, you can, you can, start auditioning people. You can go to Craigslist as we talked about a lot. And, you know, there's a certain amount of pain and reward for going that route. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you can also do what is done is just go to the A-list players down here who are the for hire guys and, you know, just send them your songs and say, Hey, you know, show up, you know, you're supposed to be A-list and, you know, you vet them in some way. Yeah, sure. And that's actually the recommendation I got from another guy I met down here is like, you know, there's some really good players down here. They don't want to be in a band. But, you know, they'll show up and they'll play and they'll show up and they'll play just, you know, rings in my head. Now, I'm, I being somewhat of a control freak, I want it to be good. I don't want it to be loose. But you realize with guys for hire, it's you're going to get different expectations of what prepared is, or what they're willing to do for a hundred dollar gig or two hundred dollar gig or whatever yeah. it may be. Yeah. And, you know, there's a continuum of that. Right. You know, if if. I'm pretty good at booking gigs. And so if I'm like, Hey, you know, if you prioritize me, I'll make you first call. There's a give and take to that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like, if I have work for you, but you gotta, you know, you're going to have to commit, you're gonna have to <laughs> learn some stuff the way I want it learned and that type of thing. That whole philosophy about being a guy for hire. I, again, I always get stuck on this because if we're preaching about quality, quality means polished to me, prepared there's a certain element of music that can have a certain amount of spontaneity. I don't like you did a, a weekend of gigs, you know, you, you did it as a favor to me. If you lived here, it would have been a good paying weekend. Right. Um, right. It you, was, it was know, a net zero, your, right? I mean, yeah, it, 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 well, for your financially net zero, you know, for my soul, it was a hugely beneficial thing, but um, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. We Just got to hang. Got to hang. Yeah. 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 Somebody, but, I mean, else, yeah. somebody else paid for my, my airplane because they paid us for the gig and my cut paid for the airplane ride, which was great. Like that. Was so perfect. you as a guy who could take those types of gigs, would you have done that amount of, so it was, we played, uh, you and I did something on the Friday and then we played Saturday and Sunday. Is that right? Right. We, you and I did an acoustic thing, duo thing ish. On, that was loose on Friday. That was loose and completely off the cuff. At least as far as yeah. I was concerned, I had no prep but, for that. But, but you were ready. For, you, so you came in Thursday. We rehearsed Thursday, yeah. right, with the, with the rhythm section. Whatever. I think you we I, played Thursday, rehearsed Friday, and then played Saturday and Sunday is how okay, that worked. Okay, there you go. But whatever. Yeah, exactly. It was a so compressed you, you time. you learned period. a show for me. And, yeah. and I'm, my question to you is, would you have learned that show? I think the gigs paid three bills, four bills, something like that. Would you have put in that amount of effort if you if someone asked you to if someone asked you to pick up a gig yeah for a one off one time Saturday three hour gig 
yep. would you have learned to show to the detail that you did for me? Um, for a one-time gig, probably not. Um, for a two, for a two gig. Yes. And here's the reason why there is a level of prep beyond which that first gig doesn't matter, especially we were not planning on rehearsing, right? It was like show up and play. And then it turned mm -hmm. out, Oh, Hey, we're all around tomorrow afternoon. We should get together and hang, you know, right, and so yeah. we, we did, we, but the, that was not part of the original plan. And so it was, this really was, you know, show up at the gig and, and be ready to go. You know, here's a set list play. Um, I knew a lot of these tunes. They were kind of, you know, your tunes are like GB style stuff is like, right. I mean, it's like, it's, you're not doing anything way off the beaten path. There were some songs I'd never played before and, and some that I, you know, had to work on or whatever. Um, but I, I probably would have, I would have put in at least 80% of that effort for a one-off gig, but, but that's probably it because that first gig is always going to be loose. Like it doesn't matter Everybody can do all the prep. It can sound tight to the audience, but on stage, it's going to be, you know, high alert from downbeat to, you know, curtain because you don't know how to play together as a unit, right? You are, for me in that scenario, I was stepping into a unit of not of, of nine people who are used to each other. And now I'm the odd man out, but I'm also happen to be the drummer. So if I take things in a different direction, <laughs> everybody has to follow, right? Like this yeah, is yeah. going to happen. So, I mean, I understand that walking into those kinds of things. And I also have to play with some confidence because if I play waiting to figure out what to play, that's terrible. I've done it. Like, okay. So, so this is you, my anal retentive friend. You, this is you, my yeah. hyperactive brain friend. Correct. W Tell me what you your experience is, because I, I don't do this very often. I mean, I've had some subs before, but my expectations are generally low, and I generally call the most GB of GB songs when I know I'm going to have a sub at, at something, right? Yeah. What what typically is expected? So, um, the, so what's interesting? A I've never local a local scene. Yeah. A list, you know, like like the guys who have good good enough ears to sit in and get through a gig with you and not hurt you too much. It's interesting. I've never thought about this before, but I've, I've thought this every time, anytime I'm in any sort of scenario and a sub comes in, rarely are they terrible, right? Like you kind of know, you don't pull, you don't book the terrible people. I'm, I suppose I've probably had a terrible sub here and there, but by and large, you know, the people come in, they play it down. And what I always think is the, you know, not sub on that gig, or if it's a collection of musicians and everybody is, is, you know, new to it. I always think, man, that guy did way more work than I ever would have. Like, that's the <laughs> thought. I don't know how much work that person did, but that's But he's my, exceeding your expectation for preparation. Yeah, and I always think, gosh, man, these guys are showing me up. But I, I have a feeling, I like, I am perceived, I, I know, at least in some scenarios anyway, I am perceived to be the same way. Like, I show up and I play and people are like, man, you knew all the gig. And I'm thinking, oh, I pulled the wool over your eyes. You know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, I'm not prepared enough. I was sweating bullets walking into this. Like, that whole thing. And part of that is, is that, you, you know, I care, right? And I want it to be good and I want it to be as great as it could be. And the moment that I'm sitting down on stage is the moment that I wish that I'd spent three extra days prepping all this music, right? Like, cause there is a benefit to that, uh, to, you know, going nuts and, and really coming in knowing it cause you can have more fun. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think people, I've always been impressed by any subs that we've had, uh, cool. for a variety of gigs. Yeah. It's always like, man, they, like they did, they did whatever homework. And I think that's the thing is these A-list players. And I, I really don't, I, I like this term, but I don't like to put myself in that group. It feels like I'm, I, I don't feel like I'm an A-list player, but, um, but you know, these A-list players, they know what it takes. They know how to live with themselves. And so if they can just show up and play and it sounds great, fine. And if they can't, they know that and they do the prep work that gets them to the point where they can show up and play. Yeah. I guess my, um, so I don't micromanage the process, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't worry about that. It's like, I'm going to trust you and you either show up and do it. And then, you know, we say good things about you and we call you back or you don't show up and do it. And then we don't say anything about you and we don't call you back. And, and that's when people know. All right. I'm going to put you on the spot here though. So you prepared, you know, I sent you stuff and yeah, we do have a lot of GB stuff because we're that type of booking band, yeah. but within the GB stuff, we have a lot of hits and a yeah. lot of breakdowns, yeah. and a lot of that type of stuff. Yeah. So you had to be on that. 
Yes. Well, most of it without ever having heard your arrangements either, by the way, I'll point out. Right. <laughs> right. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, it was mostly, I mean, most of those hits and stuff, you know, we talked through them um, yeah. on this show and, sometimes. And the, even. Run and the one run through we did with, with Nick and the rhythm section was helpful. Right? It was totally helpful. But a lot, but what that taught me, I mean, we, that showed me that even the things that you had told me you were doing certain ways were not being done those certain ways. It was like, okay, whatever you think, you know, coming into this is wrong. This band has morphed things from where the original artist started them into what this band's version is. And that's fine. And that's what that rehearsal taught me was do not trust what you think is about to happen. Look at Paul, Nick, or Steve, right? Like the, the, the three of you were my anchors. And I, there was never a moment in those gigs where I wasn't focused on at least right. one of you. Right. And that's how we got through those hits and all that stuff. And I think that's actually the subtlety that I'm, that I, the reason I have this kind of apprehension about it, like that's the way that I have always done it. Like right. Right. all music, I try and find the thing and do something. So, you know, but I, I know a guy in, in the Bay area who he um, just, cuts it down to lowest common denominator and, you know, so he can call whoever's available and they get through a gig and, and, you know, he's a good singer. So, I mean, you're kind of focused on that, yeah. but the band is always, you know, a little bit like, what's he going to do now? And, but the arrangements are never, are never, uh, complex. Yeah. They're never taking you anywhere really interesting. And that would be a business model, right? If you want to be just, if you don't want to run a band and you don't want to, you know, you're, you just want to get the gigs and have people show up. And again, there's that continuum of the more you get them paid, the you know the more you can get a little bit of buy-in and a little bit more commitment. But in lieu of that, you know, if you just want to be able to take gigs and show up, um, you know, you GB the hell out of it, and you know, you do straight to the record representations, and you're probably going to be in the ballpark with any kind of sub. You know, any yeah. any guy, yeah. any guy who would warrant himself as to be worthy of being a sub, right? So you could, but but I feel like there's and and. You have to be careful setting your own expectations in a scenario like this. But, you know, if you're in, you said this, this, the vibe of where you are is more, less about solidified bands and more about, you know, who you've hired to play that particular night. But you're a band yeah. guy, right? And I am too. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I like doing these sub things because it challenges me, but I have more fun at gigs in general when it's a band and, and we're, you know, able to kind of build on the last time, right. You know, and, and move that forward. And, sure. and so I wonder if there's not some sort of a, you know, hybrid or I'll, I'll, I'll steal something from our, our tech world, the freemium model, although there's nothing free involved with this, <laughs> but, but starting with, okay, like, you know, you, you book some, you book a gig and you hire the musicians that you can get for it and you play it. And then the next gig you might hire, let's say you hired, you know, four guys or whatever. And, and the next gig you hire three of those same ones and somebody new. And, you know, over the course of a few months, you've got this sort of safe GB kind of thing going on that you are evolving. It, you're booking for it, right? You're, mm. You've got a, a pool of, let's say, 10 players that are coming in and, and playing with you. And now you start to realize, okay, this particular lineup is good the other musicians on stage are going to realize that too. And then you sort of go to them and say, Hey, you know, they will, they will sort of naturally become your first call, right? Whether or not, you know, they're available all the time, you know, it's like, Oh, this is the band I would prefer to have. Like you'll figure that out pretty quick and then go to those people and say, Hey, look, you know, we've been playing together on and off for whatever, three, four, five, six months. And we've got a good little thing going. I think we all see that when we're on stage together how about we get together and we rehearse once? <laughs> don't 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 throw out the word band, right? If that freaks people out, but let's get together <laughs> and rehearse once. And and you know, there's a few things that I've been hearing, and I bet you guys too that you know we could segue some songs together. I think we'd have some a little more fun with this if we tightened up a few things and added a few little twists and turns. And if they're the type of people that would be into that, then they will be into that, right? Yeah. And now you know. And then without, you know, it's like the surprise, you're in a band band, right? And mm -hmm. like, hey, we're going to call it a thing. And like, wait, oh, we're all in a band. Okay, cool. You know, and but you've already got buy-in. You've already got history together. And Commit, Commitment adverse. 
Commit the commitment adverse. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I've definitely been in those scenarios where it's like intentionally loose and then suddenly it's just natural, right? You Like, oh, this works. We should do this. Like the gig that we have next weekend should be the same lineup. And you start, no. do, you know, it's like, why would we want to reinvent the wheel? And, and if you have the right players that think that way, then they are the right players for that kind of a scenario. And if they're not, they're like, oh, no, it's fine, whatever. You know, it's like, okay, great. Like, where's the, all right, where's my number two guitar player? Okay, that, that one likes the band idea long term. That's actually a better option. And you, know, you pull it together. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't know that I don't know that I want a band. I just want right. to more think about how to manage uh, my expectations and the expectations of good players who I would want to sit in. And, you know, I'm thinking about what you were saying about how I didn't prepare you very well when you played for me. Right. I, I threw some audio files at you and we talked to a couple of things and, you know, we like highlighted this one's not like the record. So we got to talk about it, that type of thing. And you had. And you even left them behind. You had your your Dave's notes written in Dave shorthand that oh, yeah. are of useless to anybody. Yeah, but, useless um, to anybody. Usually also useless to Dave. But <laughs> but you know, I know like when I look down at those things in the middle of a gig, it's like, okay, I meant something by this. There's it, something it happening. Just dogs in memory. Yeah. yeah like gonna happen. Look around and see what somebody's going to catch your eye because they know you're new. And it's like, yeah, okay, follow that guy. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And I guess that, that's actually on me to actually be better about have a chart, you know, and be prepared. And if you're going to ask people to come in, you know, ask them to learn some stuff and give them, you know, a, a solid foundation of stuff to learn from, but freaking chart your songs. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Or ask the, the you know, ask the people that, that play with you to do that. Like a lead sheet, right? Some kind, yeah. You got to have lead sheets. I would think for that kind of scenario. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, you can't you can't just tell people you can't call a song across the stage. I mean, there's some musicians you can do that with, and that's like amazing, but probably not even a good idea because you might have tried. You might have it wrong. They might have it right. But, you know, as I always say, right is a consensus when you're on stage. So, well, I, as as I get my toes set here and, you know, start to come to some things that I, I could see myself wanting to do that. Like I said, the acoustic solo stuff is starting to happen. Kind of cool. Yeah. But you know, you always, you always want to just satisfy different inches. Right. So mm -hmm. if, if it's, if it's as easy as, Oh, you know, I know three guitar players, I know four bass players, seven drummers, you know, let me just get, get the best ones I can and get them as prepared as I can. And I guess the guy that I talked to my friend, Randy down here, he'd said, you know, most of them, if it's a decent gig and, you know, it's a little more than, than minimum, they probably would get together and do a walkthrough of this type of stuff. And so, yeah. 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 So anyway, it's, it's a process. It's uh, it's been nice talking to the couple of the guys down here uh, and one woman down here, uh, just getting a feel for it. It's just very different. Scenes are different wherever you go. They're different, totally. but they're the same. You know what I mean? Yeah. They no, have their no, own organic totally difference. Yeah. But the basic premise of book a gig, you know, play the gig, <laughs> play a gig, <laughs> <laughs> book a gig, promote the gig, play the gig, wash, exactly. rinse, repeat. Then yeah. you die. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Get paid. <laughs> Get paid. Oh, there you go. I forgot the important step. This is why I'm rarely the band leader. It's better to let somebody else do it. That's good. <laughs> I'll pack up the but, stuff. Yeah, it's starting to it's starting to come together. And and again, thanks again, Dan Curcio, for pointing me to a cool place to play. And um it was just a nice weekend, man. I got to some some stuff that just came out of re a request on Friday night turned into something I really enjoyed. And you know, I played it again on Saturday, so I got double the fun out of it. That's great. And just little things like that about just getting some regularity, just so some consistency, some flow to your music life, Dude. which has been so broken for what we're exactly 12 months now, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, I, that I totally get this. The, and that is one of the reasons I am so thankful to be doing this next to normal thing right now. I mean, when they, you know, and I heard about it in October, it was like, oh, I can't, like, I love doing this show. I would love a chance to play this show on real drums because I've always, I mean, I've always played it on real drums, but always with like brushes or rods because the, the singers have never been mic'd when I did it seven years ago. And it was like, oh, I'd love the opportunity. And they're like really great songs to play. And I'm like, but I can't do, you know, five shows a weekend for six weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just not going to happen. And they're like, oh, no, we're doing them in rep only twice a weekend. Like, oh, this is perfectly set up for Dave. And, and normally I wouldn't like being off stage or in a drum booth or, you know, any of the stuff that is happening here because of COVID. But because of COVID, it's actually kind of nice. And, and I can get lost in the music. It, like, I don't feel all that disconnected. There are moments, in fact, we had, well, there were three acts 
four acts on 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 Saturday because two shows and in three of them there were moments where we had to loan an extra beat or three to the uh, to the cast on stage to to catch up with them or to let them catch up with us um, and it was we realized after the 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 first act of the second show that their stage monitors weren't loud enough and that mm. was that was what was going on you know we thought the first show people just get out of sync it happens in this show like there's there's a lot of weird timings and stuff and it's just like you listen you catch up you know right is a consensus everybody moves forward no harm no foul but when it kept happening we were talking about it and one of the actors she chimed in and she was like yeah i don't know what's going on and then our sound guy happened to chime in this was on set break or I don't know, whatever they call it, intermission. Um, and uh, I call it set break. Everybody laughs at me, but that's what it is. Um, and, you know, every we all, like all the right people were in the room. Our sound guy's like, well, what do you need? And I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I'm when I sing, I can't hear the band. He's like, well, you want me to turn up the band on the stage monitor? She's like, yeah, let's try that. And then we could tell, like, right out of the gate, the second act, it was like, okay, everything is like right where it needs to be. This is awesome. <laughs> so, but, um, but yeah, being able to do that twice a week, Every week for whatever, eight weeks, six weeks, whatever it turns out to be. That's great. Yep. I feel you. Very cool. Yeah. It's good for the, so good we, for the soul. Onward we go. Yeah. Onward we go. Yeah. You got anything coming up? Uh, other than these, these next to normal gigs. I think that runs through middle of March maybe. Um, but no. I, and then, yeah, we do. We have some outdoor monkey fist stuff. Uh, I think we've got something booked end of April. It's still cold there. Not risky, right? April, in, in April, April 30th is a little risky, but people definitely do it, especially this year. I mean, most every year people are done with winter and done being inside by, you know, end of March kind of thing. So end of April is if it's not pouring rain, you know, Friday, it's Friday, April 30th. So it's, you know, truly the end of April. Um, I, I think if the weather is not pouring rain or, <laughs> or pouring snow, <laughs> uh, I think people will come out. So yeah, it should be. Yeah, I've got kind of the same thing. I've got a winery outdoor gig on the 14th of March up in the Bay Area, yeah. and a winery out that winery outdoor gig down here in San Luis Obispo County on the 26th of March. You know, it's kind of rainy season, so both yeah. you know both could get washed. But right. the setups are right, and if you know if it's possible to play, the weather's been ridiculously good down here. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know if that's going to last for a month, but um, sure. but uh, yeah, I mean. And then there just seems to be, you can kind of tell that the the itchiness, the decrease in cases, the increase in vaccines, yeah. you know, it just feels like the, the it's bubbling, you know? Yeah. Let's hope it just doesn't bubble in the wrong direction, but I'm totally with you. Like it, like the, there is optimism. There is a, a, a glimmer and I think it's the light at the end of the tunnel. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yep. I'm with you. Yeah. Let's just hope it's not a, I will say this though, or something. Um, it will be very interesting to see what shape everybody's body is in to do three hour gigs in the house rockers I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, you 18 gotta, months, yeah. largely locked in your home. Hopefully, you know, the guys are getting some exercise or whatever it is to keep your bodies in somewhat health. But you know, our, our basic thing was a two hour gig. We play straight through a three hour gig. We'll take a, we'll take a break. Yeah. Right. Right. And uh, now a two hour gig will take, we'll probably take our break, you know, yeah. at least for the first several ones That's, to make sure everybody's, yeah, that's intact. a safe bet. Like just to hedge your bets rather. Yeah, that's smart. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, it 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 like like I said, I never I was worried about this, so I never stopped. It was like, well, it's easier to stay in shape than get in shape, so I'm sticking with it. And I'm still like it's smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's there's been times I've been fighting something at the the last these next to normal gigs. It's like I feel like I'm playing uphill. Like I, I don't know, my I wasn't comfortable and I thought maybe my stool's falling apart. And then I realized my drum stool had, there's a, there's a rug under my drum rug and evidently my drum rug overlaps it by about an inch. And the back of my stool was on the back of my rug, which meant it was, you know, a quarter inch down from mm. everything else. And I was like, Oh, this is my problem. So I realized it like, I don't know, halfway through one of the acts on Saturday. And so I like on a song where I had a break, I just, I moved all my drums around quietly, mind you, and got everything back to where it needed to be. And I was like, okay, so this isn't some sort of like COVID not playing fatigue. This is like, literally I was not playing on a level surface, <laughs> but you know, I get it. things I, yeah, it, it was, it, I let it go for a couple of weeks. Cause I'm like, I guess it's just, I don't know. I guess it's just this. So deal with it. Like, no, this isn't normal. So <laughs> yep. 
All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. You got anything else, Paul? Uh, go out there. Always be performing. Always, 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 always. It's the only way to do it. Oh, that's the wrong vamp, isn't it? Did I play the wrong song at the beginning of the show? No. I don't think you I did. Good, I, think. I think I played the right one. All right, we're going to play the right one here. Hey, there it is. This is our, this is our first uh, episode of season seven, right? It would be. That's right. Yes. Happy anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Year seven. Crazy. Have fun, folks. See you next week. Feedback at gigapodcast.com. Hey.